Ana. Appreciate Brother Randy and Miss Susan. They drive all the way up here from way down yonder, almost an hour away, almost, I guess. Bring them grandkids, help us at camp. They've been a blessing to us, y'all. Y'all been a blessing. Anybody else? Um, I just thank God that I'm saved, and I thank God for His faithfulness to me. I thank Him for His grace. Um, and uh, I thank him for answering my prayers. Um, you know, I just keep knocking at that door and keep praying. And I learned to never give up on the prayer. Because um, he will answer. Amen. And he's not a God that yes. just, um, you know, can. He will. Amen. He wants yes. to. And um, I just thank him for that. He's given it to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody? Go ahead, Jeffro. get good in here if somebody just obey the Lord here tonight. Whew. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
That's something to be thankful for. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sing that second verse one more time. Sing it with us tonight. Let's everybody sing that with us tonight. What you need to do, speak now or for the rest of the service, hold your peace. Unless you're hollering amen. All right, let's take our Bibles tonight. I got a message on my heart for you this evening, something that I've really been burdened about. I want to challenge you and be a blessing to you. Uh, Psalm 126. Psalm 126. This chapter in the Bible tonight is, is, has been used by great preachers in the past to encourage people and challenge people to be a witness and be a soul winner. And I'd like to do that tonight. I, it's heavy on my heart tonight to challenge you to be a soul winner. This is the absolute greatest work on earth. It's illustrated in Psalm 127, and uh, I'm six, I'm sorry, in verse number uh, five and six. Please, please, y'all, listen to me tonight. Don't just sit there and say, well, Brother Danny, you know, he's one of the normal sermons. Please take this to heart. I think tonight somebody's eternal destiny may be determined by how how what I say and how we react and respond to this message tonight could be the difference between heaven and hell. 
I believe tonight the reason we don't have more people are soul winners is people don't really believe that people will, will burn in hell forever. That's the only explanation I can figure for it. If you really believed that people were falling off the edge of a cliff and never have another chance, if you're a normal person at all, if you really believe that, you're going to try to do something to stop them and witness to them. This kind of preaching will never fit in a contemporary church. Their emphasis is not on soul winning. Their emphasis is on making you feel good while you're here to get you back. And that's sad. I want to challenge you tonight. Look at Psalm 126, verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him. If you were a king, president, ambassador, senator, congressman, and you were to meet with world leaders and negotiate a world plan to bring peace on earth, it would not be as important as you taking the message seriously tonight and doing something about it. If you sat down and met with scientists and medical leaders and doctors from all over the world and you figured out a cure for some disease, cancer or something, it would not be as important as Christians taking to heart what I'm gonna talk about tonight. You see, if we have peace on earth, everybody's still gonna die. If you cure cancer, you're still gonna die with something. And I really wish somebody could and would but if they do, they're still gonna die and go somewhere forever and ever and ever and ever. I wanna challenge us tonight. I'll be honest with you. My, my, I've been burdened a lot the last few days. I'm thinking to myself, am I a soul winner? Am I a soul winner? Some of you used to be soul winners. Some of you once was a soul winner. Uh, and you know, time goes by and you get sort of cold on God and you get your feelings hurt and you get knocked down and drugged through the mud and everything else. First thing you know, you, I catch myself doing that. You sort of lose your vision of souls and, and people dying without God. And, 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 and sometimes you have to be reminded of it. Everybody you work with has an eternal soul that's gonna live forever somewhere. Everybody you go, kids go to school with has an eternal soul that's gonna live forever somewhere. Now I wanna divide this little verse up in a few parts tonight and the first thing I wanna say is the worker's activity, go. The Bible said there in verse number six, he that goeth. Now the word go is a very important word in the Bible. The Lord himself said go into all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't say like a lot of people, well, I tell you what, if somebody ever knocks on my door wanting to be saved, I'm ready to tell them. He didn't tell you to wait on them knock on your door. He said for me and you to go where they are and knock on their door. And that is scriptural. In the book of Acts, they went from house to house. I'll tell you what's heartbreaking. You don't find hardly any churches going soul winning anymore. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not bragging on us. We ain't setting woods on fire. It really disappoints me and hurts me that we can't get help. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I know you gotta work and I know you got stuff, but you cannot tell me that you can't give some time. You can't tell me you cannot give some time to the Lord and just be a witness. Get some tracks. People are everywhere. I, I mean, they're absolutely everywhere. Uh, the, your flesh will rebel. You don't want to do that. Uh, that. Jesus said, go. The first two letters in gospel are go. First two letters in God are go. He, he that goeth, he that goeth. You know what the Lord compared us to? Fishermen. He said, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. He said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So if I'm following the Lord, 
I'm going to fish them in. Now, I'm going to make a statement here tonight, and I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings. I don't want you to get mad at me. Please, if you knew my heart tonight, you would not get mad at me. I, my burden is for us to win souls. That's all. If I'm going to make a statement tonight. According to that verse, if we ain't fishing, we ain't following. He said, if you'll follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. You can't follow the Lord Jesus Christ without trying to fish, catch a fish. And I'm, uh, I'm not a fisherman. I mean, some of, these, some of these boys in here, they're great fishermen and love to go fishing. And I, I think that's all right. I don't care nothing about it. If you want to do it, that's fine with me. You catch them and clean them and, and get the bones out of them. And we'll help you eat them. And I don't, I don't care nothing about fishing, but I'll tell you one thing, brother. Uh, the sorriest fisherman in the world. If I got up every Saturday morning and I got a pole and I got me some bait and I went to the river or I went to Lake James, I might go this week and not catch nothing. I might, not, I might go next week and not catch nothing. I might go the week after and not catch. But I promise you, if I went long enough, I'm gonna catch a fish. I am going to catch a fish if I keep going fishing. And later, I want to challenge everybody in here. Let's every one of us here tonight get a burden and say, you know what? I'm going to keep start fishing. I'm going to start fishing more and more and more. I'll give out tracks. I'll be a witness. I'll talk to somebody at work. You know, sometimes you can give out tracks. Sometimes you don't even have you don't even have uh, a track on you. You should have. Now, we, I usually stay armed with these chick tracks. These are, in my opinion, the best track ever written. They're, they're easy to read. They got them little pictures in them. People see it. it they're tremendous. Last night, we stopped down there. Uh, the bus did it. That sheets. We didn't have time to go to McDonald's. We stopped at sheets. And told everybody, get it, you get something, get out of here. We gotta get home. And uh, that was down in Statesville. And all there's just people coming in there, out of there, in there, out of there. And if you can sit there and not think, is that where that person's going? Or they say, they, you're not right with the Lord. I was sitting there and I told, I told Kelly, I said, Lord, days ever a size, shape, and everything in the world comes in here. And I, we started trying to witness to them. About that time, there was uh, two uh, we, uh, females uh, came in. It was obvious one of them was the girlfriend and the other one was the other girlfriend. Uh, but one, and it was very obvious. One of them looked, acted, and dressed exactly like a boy. And the other one looked like and dressed like a girl. They came in and my heart just went out to them. You know why my heart went out to them? Because that's somebody's kid. That's somebody kid. And Jesus died for them girls. I don't, don't listen to them idiotic preachers on the, on the, on the, on the radio or, or YouTube that try to tell you anybody who's ever committed that sin cannot be saved. That is not true. That is not true. Uh, you say, well, what about reprobate mind? When God does that and when any time he does that, that's between them and him and then the problem still ain't God, it's with them. And I'm gonna tell you something, my heart broke for them girls and, and I, I felt like this. I said, Rachel, have you got a track? She reached in her purse, and, and, and uh, uh, I said, you're going to go get them. I said, I sure am. And uh, she reached, and she got me, and, and, and it was them no liars in heaven. I said, I don't know if I'll do that or not. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty rough track. No liars in heaven. Here you go. Uh, and, I, and, and so they took off out the door, and I followed them out the door in the parking lot, and I went out there, and then it hit me. In the door of my forerunner, I keep a stack of them field kid CDs of his testimony. And he can make you some if you want to give them out. I reached in there and got one. I said, uh, hey, ladies, how y'all doing? And they said, fine, how are you? And I said, uh, I started talking to them. And I said, you know what? This whole world in bad shape, y'all. And, blah, 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 and, and uh, I said, you know what? The Lord's coming back. And, and the one that was a boy said, you're D right. And, and that's what she said. Honest to goodness, that's what she said. And I said, well, at least she knows the truth when she hears it. That's better than some Baptist I know. And, uh, and, and uh, uh, I, I, gave them, I gave them, I said, here, listen to this. Oh, I know what I said. I said, listen to this. This guy's been in jail, been on drugs. You need to listen to this. And I said, the only difference between him and us is he got caught and we didn't. And that's when she said that. And, and, and I said, you know, the Lord loves y'all. The Lord loves y'all. And I don't know. I, they promised me they'd listen to that CD. Another old, uh, girl works up here at the flea market. Uh, a man and a, and a woman, I don't know if 
daughter-in-law, somebody, I don't know how the family is, but they run a little place, the flea market where I, where I buy stuff. And I witness that girl and him all the time. I give them a track, I give her the CD. About a month later, I said, you listen to that? And uh, she said, no, like that. And I said, I tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you another. And, and I gave her another one. And then about a month later, I saw her. I said, did you listen to that CD? She said, yes, I did. And I said, just like this young man from, uh, from down in Charleston that gave his testimony here tonight, just like I was, they're out in sin, y'all. And me and you've got the answer for what people need. If you just run in a store like that and don't even see nobody, and all you can think of is getting in front of them in the gas line, and how many people, are, and, just, and don't even think about soul, you're never gonna catch a fish if you don't fish. You're never going to catch a fish if you don't fish. You hear me? You're never going to catch a fish if you don't fish. Amen. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to say something here tonight. I feel like the Lord put it on my heart. I'm disappointed in our men of our church. Uh, men of our church, I'm disappointed in you. I love you. I thank God for you, but I'm disappointed in you. Uh, it seems like we got ladies and kids want to witness and very few men. I'd like to challenge the men of this church. Help me. Help do what the Lord said. Go soul winning, brother. Get you a handful of track. Let's knock on some doors. I mean, we do it every Saturday morning. We meet here every Saturday morning at 930. If you can't do it then or have to work, do it on Monday night, Tuesday Tonight, I mean, you can go to a ball game. I mean, you can do other. You sure you can. If you want to, you can make time and you can go fishing. You can go fishing. Uh, one lady told me not long ago. She said, "Well, I do my witnessing online." And I said, "That's okay. That's okay. That's about all it is. Okay, but you'll, you're not going to win very many people to the Lord online. I'm not saying you can't." I'm not saying it's not a good tool. It can be a good tool. And it has been used as a good thing. But there's nothing in this world like doing what Jesus said, going face to face, preach the gospel to every creature. Not type it, not 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 to send it and try to try to uh, be a, listen, brother. He said go. He said go. He said go. He said go. Jesus said I, he, that was his commandment. The commandment, the great commission of the church is to go. Listen, we'll never have lots of big shots come in here. I mean, the big shots in Morgan probably will never be in here. But I tell you what, we can do. We can go out here in these nooks and crannies and highways and hedges. There's people on drugs everywhere you look. They are putting up signs all over Burke County begging for foster parents. You know why? Mama's on drugs. Grandma's raising the kids. Families are all to pieces. The devil taking people to hell. And Jesus said, let's go. We don't have long. Let's go and get the job done. I want to challenge you tonight. I want to challenge you tonight. Listen, one of the disadvantages we have at our church is we're so spread out. We got people that live 20 miles that way, 30 miles that way, 40, 30 miles that way, and we're spread out. Now that's good because it helps keep the gossip down. Everybody's not in everybody's business all the time, like there are in a lot of churches. But it's bad in that it's hard for some of y'all to drive all the way to the church for every little thing we have. And I understand that. I totally understand that. We live in McDowell County. Some of y'all live in Burke County. Some of y'all live in in uh, uh, Caldwell County. Some of you live in Catawba County. Some of you live in, I don't know, South Carolina. Uh, I don't know, have people, people drive a long way, come here to church every Sunday. But I tell you what you can do. I tell you what you can do. You can go to somebody in here tonight. You can meet here and say, you say, hey, you know what? I got a, I got an apartment right down below my house. Let's just go knock on every single door in them apartments. Every one of them. Every one of them. I'm telling you people, I'm telling you, you better hear me. You better hear me. And let me say this too. Woe be unto the men in this church. Woe be unto you. The spiritual men in this church. If you try to discourage your wife from going soul winning and, and, and working bus route. New, I wouldn't be in your shoes for anything in this world. Woe be unto you women if you try to hold him back and say, Saturday's my day. Saturday's my day. Friday's my time. I want time for me. Oh, you ought to get your long, wicked tongue up here on this altar and ask God to cleanse your mouth and ask God to give you a burden. Sinners! People are going to hell. People are going to hell. 
People are going to hell and we got the answer right here. Maybe we want the activity of going like the Bible says. Whoa, be unto a man, try to discourage his wife from being a bus worker. Woe be unto you if you fuss at your husband for wanting to drive a bus. Lord have mercy, I wouldn't be in your shoes for nothing in this world. Last thing I want to do is discourage somebody. It's bad enough you won't do it yourself. For heaven's sake, don't pour cold water on somebody that wants to. I'm going to tell you something. I know this will be on YouTube. I don't care. I hope they hear it. Church, churches, you know what they're doing now? Baptist churches. Independent Baptist churches in South Carolina. I said, don't y'all have a bus ministry no more? Don't y'all go? He said, our pastor, he said, we cut out all soul winning. We cut out all bus ministry. I said, why? And the brother told me, he said, well, there's so much drugs and it's so dangerous out here. It's just, you, there's just so much. He said, the only people we'll visit now is if you get a call for them to come and visit and set up an appointment and then we'll go visit them. I know, hear this, and I love them. God bless them, good people, everything. But I tell you, that's about just about as backslid as smoking pot. Hey, tell the apostle Paul it was too dangerous for him to go in some of them cities he went to where he got locked up and beat with whip. You say, Brother Danny, it is, it is dangerous. It really is. It really is. You, I mean, you might, get, you might get your head blowed off uh, the first time you go, but Lord in mercy, what a way to go, brother. You talk about a crown in glory. Woo, hallelujah, going soul winning. Yeah, and listen, God's gonna take care of you, and if God lets something happen, he'll still take care of you. Listen, people, tell the apostle Paul and Barnabas when they beat stripes in their back, well, you better not do that no more. It's too dangerous. They went right back out in the streets. Old John Bunyan laid in a bed for jail for years and years and years and years laid in jail because he would not quit witnessing and preaching out on the street. Street preaching, street preaching. Every preacher in the Bible was a street preacher, including Jesus. There is not one. I wonder if the preachers from Elevation go street preaching. I wonder, I'm not trying to be ugly. That shows how far off. You say, oh, it's exciting. Their worship experience is great. I don't know, what is a worship experience? There ain't no such thing as that in the Bible. There's soul winning, there's preaching, there's honoring God, there's witnessing, there's prayer. It's not supposed to make you feel good. It's supposed to challenge you to serve God and do right and live for God in this wicked time and day. We are living in the most selfish me, 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 I, 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 cater to my needs. Make me love it. Listen, people, that's not the part. We're an army. Amen. They told John Bunyan, they said, if you'll tell us tonight you won't preach no more, we'll let you out of here tomorrow. John Bunyan said, you let me out today, I'll preach tomorrow. His daughter Come to see him in jail and said, Daddy, we miss you. We need you at home. He said, they let me out today, honey. I'll preach again tomorrow. The workers feel. The workers zeal. You say, I don't feel, I just don't feel comfortable knocking on doors. I, you reckon Paul felt comfortable when they went into them places where they was gonna kill him and stoned him? You think he felt comfortable? Is it going to kill you? Somebody might laugh at you or slam a door in your face. Well, I tell you, we have the thin skin, bunch of sissiest Christianity I've ever seen in my life in this day and time. Good Lord, people. I feel uncomfortable knocking on doors. One lady went, got her to go one time, went soul winning one time, and they went, knocked on somebody's door, and they slammed the door in her face. She said, I'm never going to go again. Wow, that's our generation. That's it. We are we are terrified of ridicule. We are scared to death. Somebody gonna make fun. I catch myself like that. I was over at the gym. I took them Phil Kid CDs in there and gave them out to them guys that played early ball. I said, "Here you go. Take this and listen to it. Here you go. Take this and listen to it. Here you go. Take this and listen to it." I put out a bunch. I got one response. About two weeks later, one boy said, "I listened to that CD." <laughs> 
I said, you like it? He said, yeah, man, that was good. No response from none of the rest of them. I pull in there, my forerunner, brother, I've got that Jesus save sign that big on the back of my car. And I said, I know people, there's people sitting right here. You'd die before you'd do that. You'd die. You say, oh, I just, I don't know. I, don't you think that, that, don't you think you're just ashamed? Ain't that your problem? You're just embarrassed. Ain't it your problem? You think somebody might think you're a fanatic. We got you a little bumper sticker back there in the, in the, in the bookstore about that big. Can you handle that? And I don't think everybody has to put one that big. But listen, people, I was driving to church last night. Three people on the way there last night passed me and blew their horn and went. And a couple did something else. But I got three good ones. Amen. I got three good ones. Hallelujah. I was going real slow, waiting on the, waiting on the bus. And I was going about 40 miles an hour. People behind me just a blowing the horn. Oh, who is that? Who is this? The Beverly Hillbillies in front of us, 40 mile an hour on the interstate. I'm telling you, boy, we had a, we had a great time doing that. But la- ladies and gentlemen, you must. I don't feel comfortable knocking on doors. I just, I just feel a little bit, honey. Listen, there's these little girls in here. Marty can knock on doors. It's Blanca, Eva. Right back there getting up for that little baby right now. I knocked on doors. If they can do it, you mean tell me you men in here can't? If Jessica can, you mean tell me you men can't? Amen. Little, little, little Miss Vicky, 90 pounds soaking wet. And Sandy, and he's okay, can do it. And you men can't? Come on now. Hey, he that goeth forth didn't say she that goeth forth, but I reckon the Lord lets y'all go, and thank God somebody will. <whistles> Next, the worker's zeal, weeping. You know, when they see your tears, people see you cry over them, but you'll get to them. That's something you can't face. They said a worker told one time, to William Booth, he said, do you really believe that I'll burn in hell forever and ever and ever if I don't accept Christ? And Mr. William Booth said, yes, sir, I do. He said, if I believed what you say you believe, I'd crawl across London on my hands and knees on broken glass if it'd get one person saved to Jesus. You know what our problem is? We don't believe it. We either don't believe it or don't care. And I don't believe we're that mean. I believe we just don't believe it. I wrestle with that. I, once in a while, man, you really believe, you see sinners, and then first thing you know, you sort of, you know, we all do that, right? The only reason I'm fussed at you, I'm the preacher and I do, I'm doing my job. I'm just like you. I'm just like you. I lose my burden. I lose my desire. I go through times when I couldn't care less, and then I go through times when I really want to witness and all that. You know why? You know what you got to do? You got to do what you're supposed to, no matter how you feel, no matter what the weather is, no matter what time of year it is, Spend some time witnessing for the Lord Jesus Christ, the worker's zeal. You say, Brother Danny, I can't just fake it and fake crying. I can't either. Maybe we need to pray God will break our hearts for sinners. Maybe we need to do, maybe I need, maybe we need to fast and pray that God will break our hearts for sinners. Amen. Instead of all the great revivalists the church has ever had, John Smith, the mighty Wesleyan preacher, said, I'm a broken-hearted man, not for myself, but for others. God has given me such a sight of the value of souls. I cannot live if souls are not saved. Lord, give me souls or else I die. They asked some people one time, what reap? how you reached and got in church. 2% said they had a special need. 3% said they just walked in. 6% said they liked the preacher. 1% said they just visited and got saved. 5% said they liked the Sunday school. One half of 1% came to revival and it, and it got them in. 3% liked the program and 79% were influenced one-on-one by another person. 79. Now you think back when you got saved. 
Did you just decide you'd get up one morning and go to church and get saved? There might be somebody in here that did that. But the truth is, somebody in your family, somebody, my cousin witnessed to me. She said, Danny, won't y'all come to our revival? Listen, there's people still out there like me. Little Danny's running around all over the place. a lot worse than I was. There's little, there's little kids all over this county this evening. Listen, our buses. I love our bus ministry. Thank God for it. We have, we have an effective bus ministry. We have a good bus. But it could be double. It could be double what it is. And we need help in junior church. We need help in workers. We need help on the bus. We need help programmed on the bus. People... People, look how good God's been to us. God, help us tonight to have some kind of burden for sinners. The worker's tools, bearing precious seed. You gotta remember, it's the word of God that reaches people. It's not our sob stories. It's not our, our tales. Or anything. Nothing wrong with that stuff, but it's the word of God bearing precious seed. You put the word of God in their heart. I remember down there on Anthony's route one day, there was some uh, Spanish guys. I, I mean, they spoke, I reckon, it's Spanish. It wasn't English. And, and I, I, I figured it's Spanish. They were all around there. And I, I had a Spanish track. And I gave it to them. And I pointed up there and said, Jesus, Jesus. You know who Jesus is? Not your cousin over here. That one that lives up there in the sky. And, and they was nodding their head like that right there, you know. And, and, they, and I said, you know who he is? And you know what? I prayed and I said, God, use that track. God, use that track. God, use that track. Listen, everybody here, we got chick tracks back here. We can take them out of here tonight, leave them in the restrooms, uh, leave them at a restaurant, put your tip in them at a restaurant, lay them down on the table, tell the girl Jesus loves her. I mean, everywhere you go, have you got a job? Have you got any neighbors? Tell it, tell it, tell it, tell the greatest story ever told. Life's too short. It's passing us by. We're going to be dead for long. Jesus is going to come back. Let's get it done. I was thinking about Bible school. Did you know for Bible school, every one of you could have your own personal little route for three nights? Your car? Sure could. Every person in here could have your own personal little bus route, car route for three nights. Go to get your neighbor's kids. Go get your, your cousin's little kids. Go to them little kids across the street. Hey, you want to go to Bible school? All kids want to go to Bible school. I'd like to see a bunch get saved in Bible school. You know what will happen? If they're here, they will. They will. The workers seed. And that is that right there. The words of God. The words of God. I'm going to hurry and I'll be through. The worker's promise shall doubtless come again, bringing his sheaves with him. Shall doubtless come again. That guarantees you, guarantees you, if you try. You know what I believe? I believe if I go and try to win somebody else's kids, God will help my kids. If I try to preach and win somebody's grandkids, God will get a hold of my grandkids. I believe you take care of what God wants you to do, he'll take care of your needs in your life. He'll take care of your bills. He'll take care of your financial, physical, whatever it is, if you'll honor him and put him first. What good does it do to know all this scripture if you don't never win nobody to the Lord with it? You're just, you're just like the Pharisees. We got it all up here and nothing in here. Everybody in here can take this book and turn to Romans chapter 10. Or you can turn to John 3.16. Or you can turn to all these scriptures. You, live, you work with somebody, here's a good idea. How about this? Hey, we'd like to invite you, over, you and your wife over to eat supper with us Friday night. Fix some supper. And then when everything's over, say, look, kids go off in there and play. Could I talk to you about the Lord? You don't have to, you don't have to do it on a bus route. You can do it in your living room or their living room. You can take somebody at work and say, you know what? I've been thinking about you. I'm not trying to be pushy or nothing like that. Are you a Christian? Why is it so hard for us to say that? Are you saved? Do you know if you died tonight, you'd go to heaven? Every one of us ought to ask the Lord to give us the boldness to say that. You say, well, these obnoxious people that get out here and they preach to everybody. I know, I know there are some people that have a, 
a smart aleck attitude. There are people that, that are pushy. There are people that maybe do it in the wrong spirit. That don't give us no excuse to, to do it in the right spirit. Sure don't. Somebody said this, and I'll read this and I'm through. So little time, the harvest will be over. Our reaping done, we reapers taken home. Report our work to Jesus, Lord of harvest, and hope he'll smile and say, well done. You think he will? How many times I should have strongly pleaded, how often did I feel to strictly warn the spirit moved, had I pled for Jesus, the grain has fallen, lost ones not reborn. Despite the heat, the ceaseless toil, the hardship, the broken heart of those we cannot win, misunderstood because we're often peculiar, still no regrets we'll have but for our sin. A day of pleasure or a feast of friendship, a house, a car, or garments, lair or fame will all be trash when souls are brought to heaven and then how sad to face the slacker's blame. The harvest white, the reapers few and wasting and many souls will die and never know the love of Christ, the joy of sins forgiven. Oh, let us weep and love and pray and go. Today we reap or miss our golden harvest. Today has given us lost souls to win. She's coming. Or then to save some dear ones from burning. Today we'll go to bring some sinner in. If we really believe that people are going to burn in hell forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, can't tell me it's not going to make some kind of difference in the way we see people every day at work. Don't be so scared. You say, now if I go in there and witness at work, they're going to think, let them think it. What are they going to think at the judgment day when you had to answer and never even mentioned it to them? What are they going to think then? Let's do what God wants us to do. I want you all to pray for me. I'm your pastor. I'm asking you to pray for me that God will make me a soul winner. I mean that. God will make me a soul winner. I witness to everybody. I witness all the time. But I want to, I want to see somebody get saved. I want, to, I want to win somebody to Jesus. I want to go out on the street and give out tracts. And, I want to, I've, and I've been to the hospitals this week in Asheville. I've been to funerals. I've been to uh, good night, two, priest, two funerals, hospital, priest revival. And I give out tracts everywhere I go. But i only seen uh, one two people saved this week you know what I want to see I want to sit down with somebody and give them the gospel and say can I pray with you will you ask the Lord say and do it right now. that's what I want to see I want to be a soul winner you name me something better name me something better let's stand by our heads for prayer our heads are bowed and eyes are closed let's come and pray tonight let's ask God Listen, if our church will go and knock on doors and beat the bushes and go in the highways and hedges like Jesus said, he'll fill this place up. He'll fill this place up. Come on, let's, let's pray. Come on, come on. Amen. Amen. Come on, that's right. That's right. Others, others, let's come. Sort of weird, the only one's comes, one's doing it already about the rest of us. Let's obey God. Let's obey God here tonight. Let's obey God here tonight. There's somebody that lives beside you, somebody you work with. You say, they won't let me witness on my job, preacher. You can, you can discreetly talk about the Lord. You can talk to them after work. You can talk to them in the parking lot. You can talk to them somewhere. Amen. Amen. Let's fill this altar here tonight. Say, oh God, oh God. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would help us tonight. Help us to be a soul winner for the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help me as a pastor of this church. I beg you, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit of God. Not be ashamed ever to witness for Jesus Christ. I pray you'd give us souls, Lord. Help us to cross paths like them two girls last night. I pray for them, Lord. I don't know where they are right now. That boy at the truck stop I talked to the other day, I don't know where he is right now. Lord, you do. Get a hold of him, Father. Please, God, get a hold of him. Have your way. 
God bless everybody here. Give us bus workers. Give us some bus drivers. Give us help, Lord. Give us help. Lord God, give us help. Please, Lord, help us to get the job done. I'm so glad, Lord, that though, uh, that, that, that somebody cared when I, wasn't, when I wasn't saved and somebody had a burden for me. And Lord, help us to have a burden for somebody else. Save souls in this church. We'll thank you for it. So I'm still praying tonight. Amen. So I'm still praying tonight. Amen.